must once again make clear that which most do not seem to understand. This podcast is marked as explicit, not because it offers a mature look into the world of topics not meant for the young or immature, but because it mucks about in very appalling, gormless, and tasteless filth whilst reveling in it. Cinema Psyops aims to drag you down into the very same muck filled with sexual deviancy and decayed morality. Cinema Psyops. They heap weekly praise on such filth while discussing the most base and animalistic urges, reviewing the lowest common denominator of low-grade trash ever considered film. Court, the guy who's so confused about what fucking week of his life he's fucking wasting on fucking doing this show, and just as confused about everything that's going on as my co-host, Matt! Where are we right now? You're currently sitting in your bunker recording studio, and I am also sitting in my bunker recording studio across the city of Omaha. I just set up my our family's Christmas present. We got it for ourselves early. <laughs> I got a little little mini HP uh, projector and screen. It's nice. Wow, awesome. Yeah, if you need any help with setting that thing up or, you know, own or any of that stuff, if you haven't done it before, just let me know. I'll come over. Yeah, I, I, I got it pretty well set up. Uh, it's not how the setup is going to be. 
uh, forever. But for right now, it works. We already watched a movie on it. It was a lot of fun. Awesome, man. That's cool. Getting your first projector is always a blast. Uh, You pick the right time to get them. Uh, Since HDR has come into play and HDMI and all that stuff, all the confusing shit that I used to have to memorize with hooking up the YPBPR or, you know, whatever other types of additional cables that there were with projectors and setting convergence and all that kind of bullshit is completely useless. Completely useless. I don't need any of that anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I wasted all that time on my earlier projector setting all that stuff up and getting it just right and just perfect. And now literally any schmuck can just buy a projector that has HDR, plug it in and get better, if not as good of results as what I used to get with my first projector. You're going to be mad. You're going to be like one of those Republicans. You're going to be like, no, we can't have these devices. Everyone has to go through all the hardships I did. No, actually, I love it. I think it's fucking great. Um, I know that's because you're not an asshole. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I'm so glad that someone can actually have that happen. And besides, now I have to focus in on cable management because that's still things that are important to me. Yeah, right. And good cable management is always a good sign, which I do not have good cable management in my home theater right now. I just basically Hackensteined it during the pandemic with my new projector and have never fucking fixed it since just because I haven't had time. I have shit cable management for it for uh, I've studied networking in the past. You think I'd be better, but I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) yeah my cable management is about as obsessive compulsive as people remember it being from photos of my studio rack mount with all the cabling that i did (laughs) yeah it's like ah who the hell cares (laughs) oh look it's color coordinated for ease of troubleshooting who would think of doing that in advance yeah 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 well not us (laughs) no me that's me that's that's you yeah totally that's what you do (laughs) that's what i do if i'm getting paid for it if it's just me and my own personal stuff it's like a fucking mess well it's too much like work to actually have to do it organized right yeah right (laughs) god i do that enough in my day-to-day life (laughs) i'm gonna set this up as messy as possible Speaking of as messy as possible, let's talk about Beast of Blood this week, the final of the four Blood Island films that we covered. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. Or as I, I like we're... to call it, a jaunty walk through the jungle, because that seems to be the bulk of this runtime. That I mean, that's just like this like Lord of the Rings fucking just walking through. <laughs> right. Only without Smeagol running around asking, what is it? And why does it yeah. ruin it? And all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, there's some, uh, there are some highlights of Beast of Blood that definitely give it uh, you know some some something worth talking about and some things we can kind of sink our hooks into to to do a review on absolutely but for the most part i'm going to say that mad doctor of blood island is probably the best of the series and if you're going to watch one yeah. of them make that one it yeah i agree i was i was just about to agree with all of that yeah say the same thing <laughs> yeah and again this is probably the second best out of all of them i think i i would put this as number two um yeah because uh, it has the same amount of padding and few and far between moments that happened in brides of blood but the brides of blood had a real nasty misogynistic streak through it that puts it well below this one even though that's yeah. a better made film and probably more entertaining true and then terror as a man was just a fun romp that doesn't even really like just because the same people made it because you know and it's like a first <laughs> go at the blood island trilogy proper you know we're gonna yeah. include it because it was included in the box set but really that one is kind of separate from those i'm not really gonna rank it in comparison to the other three but as far as just a drive-in film goes that was a total blast and, and fun to watch so if you're getting the box set the order would be for the box set probably mad doctor of blood island then beast of blood then terror is a man and then the very last one is going to be just because of the misogyny rides blood yeah yeah agreed yeah. i'm with you on that I, I i don't have any arguments with that one well i found for this week uh some music that's going to be befitting up for the pirate radio edit there's either talk of a blood beach or a beast or mm. blood yeah. as in bloody holiday but unfortunately uh. i didn't have any songs about a blood beast oh well that's too bad yeah you think more musicians would write songs about blood breasts and beasts because those are the three most important bees of any film right <laughs> yeah i think they've had enough of our jaunty banter that we're trying to get back and forth going on here <laughs> even even we're tired of trying to come up with some fucking pablum for everybody to chew on so why don't i get to the first song groovy ghoulies blood beach and before that we're going to play the kevin intro for how you get yourself a steam code and i guess i'm just going to stop offering it because nobody seems yeah, to be interested in it nobody so. wants to steam code man yeah i fucking give up like i i don't know how much easier to make it other than like i'm just going to randomly email someone and tell them they won and even then they probably don't want it because they'll think it's phishing yeah right 
right? They'll be like, all right, that's you're not getting nothing. When you let me guess, you're some prince and you need money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm no prince, but I definitely need money, don't we all? Yeah, well, yeah don't yet. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Well, why don't you ponder that while we take this little break? Hey, everyone, this is Kevin. As many of you probably have heard, Bo will be heading back to school to become a teacher. Congratulations, Bo. As such, I'll be taking over the reins, managing, and spreading the good word of Legion Podcast. To kickstart things off, as an added thank you for patrons, Legion plans to have Steam Code giveaways for current Patreon backers. A random person will be picked from the Patreon, and the winners can choose from the available Steam Codes. Thank you so much for supporting Legion Podcast. You can reach me on Twitter or the Legion Discord group. My username is at Lonely Bob. See you around. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. It's one minute, 17 odd seconds, give or take. Maybe almost one minute, 18 seconds by the Groovy Ghoulies. I fucking love that band. Nice. Short, sweet, and to the point, which I'm hoping we're going to be able to accomplish with this review of (laughs) Beast of Blood. Well, that's really all up to you. (laughs) Or how much you fucking distract us, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's also been known to happen, but fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Why must you call me out so? Yeah. How dare you, sir? <laughs> the first 20 minutes, the film opens on a boat. Um, big shock there. Oh, Every single one yeah. of these has. Uh, one dude is doing a brood stare where he's just looking out at the waves of what's going on. While another dude is strumming away on his guitar. And we see a reanimating corpse looking arm of some sort of thing that is vaguely human. It's hiding in an, an escape boat. And it sort of reaches out underneath the cover for the escape boat. Somebody starts talking. I'm bored with writing. That's our first clip. Glad to be going home, huh, Doc? Yes, very. A little sorry to leave in a way, though. You think there'll be more trouble on the island? I think that's over and done with. What I meant was that, well, with all the excitement, I never had a chance to really see the island. You know, get to know the people. Well, it'll still be there when they retire you. It's at this point my drug-addled brain starts to remind myself that this is pretty much how the last film ended, and this is supposed to be the same fucking Dr. Hot Pants leaving the (laughs) island that he supposedly just saved everybody on from the mad doctor. Yes, correct. (laughs) All right, with this, an axe-happy zombie guy goes ape shit on the crew, whacking, hacking, and slashing his way through all of them. That was actually pretty awesome. That was, yeah, Jesus. He's a fast-moving monster motherfucker with some acrobatic flair, as more crew members struggle with him and the boat catches fire because of course it does everything has to catch fire in this everything catches fire 
Yeah. It can't not catch fire. Not only does it catch fire, it goes up really quick, like a matchstick house. Like, this thing must have been soaked in kerosene before it it's hit the It's almost like it's not even on water. <laughs> right? It's like floating in a giant shot glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Filled yeah, with, like, hard really green weird. alcohol, right? It's just right up. <laughs> the battle and the fire rage on as we see the boat explode, leaving only Dr. Hot Pants clinging to driftwood of convenience. The beast is shown on an island that he apparently drifted off towards as he comes to and stops his way through the jungle. So basically they make it just far enough from Blood Island for the beast to destroy the ship and then basically just drift him's way back onto the same island, starting yeah. us all over again. And that's yes, exactly, exactly what he does. He, he stalks his way through the jungle very slowly. And then, oh, of course. By st- very slow. I mean, there's no other way for any creatures to go. They always go slowly. Yeah, and when I say he stalks through the jungle, I mean he is casual and slow as fuck strolling. This yeah. takes a really long time. It goes on forever. He must be having a nice time. It's just a nice trip. <laughs> he makes it to a river, walks slowly again through the river, and then makes it to a rapids area in that same river. He walks past a cobra on a rock in the river and out of frame, and then the film holds on the cobra, and then the opening title card pops up. What an opening. Now, the violence and all of that stuff is probably about the first four minutes, and then there's probably, what, like another two to three minutes of him just walking and then we sit on the opening credits which are another couple of minutes this film is heavily fucking pad i mean when are we gonna drop the one ring really when's that gonna happen after the trippy animated credits we cut a- which also took forever yeah just like i just said earlier yes <laughs> we cut back to a port where the dr hot pants arrives and appears to have survived being a driftwood clutching castaway he also seems to be thriving in new clothing a snazzy pink suitcase and a leather attache breathtaking yeah. ensemble for the man of adventure or colonization he looks great <laughs> that leads to our next clip i figured we might as well start getting your gear aboard three crates and a couple of smaller boxes is that right right sorry i'm late okay watch those cans welcome aboard doctor i'm myra russell of the honolulu clarion mj russell right what are you doing here running down a story you If you're serious, Miss Russell, I'm afraid you've taken a long trip for nothing. You just proved I didn't. What do you mean? Well, a man with nothing to hide wouldn't have to be so evasive. And he might even wonder why I traveled 2,000 miles just to meet him. I guess you're going to find a story, whether there is one or not. Come on, doctor, give me a little credit. I don't rate a syndicated byline for nothing. I wrote you a couple of times, six months ago. I remember. I wrote the foundation, too. Then I suppose they told you what you wanted to know. What they wanted me to know. They didn't say one word about your first report on Blood Island. What first report? The statement you made while at the hospital here, after you were rescued at sea. Well, I see you two have met. Oh, I'm an old fan of Dr. Foster's. What time do we sail, Captain? Right now. I was very ill at the time, Miss... uh... It is, Miss Russell. I'm sorry we haven't got more time to talk now, but if you're still on mainland oh, when I get back... we've got time, Doctor. We're fellow passengers on this trip. Look, I don't want to crowd you, but I've put a lot of time and work into this, and I don't believe that what happened on Blood Island or what may still be happening there is your exclusive concern. Now, if you want to tell me about it, fine. If not, I'll try not to get in your way. I'm sure you won't, Miss Russell. Excuse me. Cast off the bow line. That isn't the same village. No, the tribe moved to this place several months ago. Why? Better fishing, maybe. They seemed a bit more friendly the last few times. Maybe they remember the doctor. Durangi, isn't it? He is afraid of you. Why? The evil one touched you. The boat on which you sailed away from here sank. All drowned, except you. Who told them that? My father and I. We found you there in the sea. We brought you back to the old village. You were nearly dead. It was you? My father and I. Now he is gone. The evil one took him. Hey, what? Is this your woman now? No, she's not, and this is a $200 camera. When I want picture taken, I will tell you. 
Ang gwapong Amerikano. Nagpalik siya. At may kasamang babae. Hindi naman yan dati ang kasamang baba... Salo. I have to talk to Ramu. I'll get your boxes to government house. They'll be safe. I'd appreciate that. I was kind of hoping you'd be glad to see me, old friend. I have not been glad about anything for a long time. You accomplish nothing by defying the evil one. If the beast is still alive, I'll find him. Now I can use your help if you want to give it, but you won't stop me. The green men have returned. Why don't you do that tomorrow? Even if you get the transmitter working, the Como section closes at 10. If you're all that well informed, you probably know I left the Foundation some months ago. Doctor, you're a sterling character and a brilliant scientist, but this cloak and dagger bit just isn't your bag. Here, I brought this for you. Milk? Fresh out of a can. I've had mine and our captain favors other kinds of liquid refreshment. Thanks. I, uh, I thought you were going to bed, if you can call it that. I am. Right now. Good night. Myra, it's very good. Why, doctor, you'll turn my head. Boy, Dr. Hot Pants sure is a lucky man. Yeah, that man knows how to pull some ladies. <laughs> During the clip, we see them arrive at the island and be greeted by the natives on the boats. They also obviously settle in and prepare for fighting the green men beast things. After that clip, the reporter lady is beset upon by a beast man, but is startled before by the captain before the beast man can actually attack. She lays down in bed and the beast man reappears and saunters towards the reporter. They cut from that to Dr. Hot Pants. He finds the problem with the power because for some odd reason, the power just got shut down while this was happening. And that's why she decides to go to bed. And it turns out it was just a pulled plug, which I'm guessing the beast man <laughs> thing probably stumbled over it and unplugged yeah. it that way so he reseats it this reveals the monster to the reporter who screams as it lunges at her with a knife the captain appears scares the green man off it just runs away and dr hot pants takes pot shots and misses and the green man runs smack into the island badass lady who hacks him twice with a machete ending his miserable existence and that also ends the first 20 minutes there <clears throat> so you get a lot of act i mean while there is a lot of walking and filler you still get some action in the first 20 yeah there's some good moments i mean that they kind of blew their wad on that opening scene of just yeah. the hacking and a slashing <laughs> with the axe i mean that was pretty great and that yeah. creature is awesome they should have had more action with his fucking rotten ass uh, they spent all the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> they had to protect the suit. They had to be very yeah. careful what they did with it because that's where all the money went. It was rented. <laughs> we need to talk about the makeup effects for that. So it looks like he's like melted away and or rotted away. So you see bone and flesh sticking out. It looks like a Bernie Wrightson Tales from the Crypt style zombie, basically. It really does, yeah. And, you know, for being, this was released in 1970, so I would say it was probably shot in 1969. And considering how some of the effects went for some of these creature suits and everything, 1970, that's pretty impressive, especially for as low budget as what these films obviously are. Agreed. It was, yeah, I was pretty impressed. I really was expecting them to use it way more than what they did. But like, if you really got into seeing it hack and slash with an axe at the start of the movie, that's all you get. Like pretty much, uh, I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's what you're in for. This is kind of, you know, just get, get used to what you're getting here and you know, don't, don't throw a fit about what you're not getting. However, if you like the idea that maybe this was part of the Mad Doctor of Blood Island and they're just padding it out with additional scenes. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <clears throat> if you remember, right, they talked about how a monster was on a ship and caused it to sink and attack the crew, right? Yeah. They talk about that right. in Mad Doctor and we don't see it. Well, yes. we see it in this film. Yeah. But, this is where the crew gets attacked. Right, but it's supposed to be after they leave, once they defeat the Doctor the first time around. So maybe they had way more movie on their hands than what they knew what to do with, with everything that they shot. And then Mad Doctor of Blood Island got extended into Beast of Blood. Yeah. Maybe. Either that, or maybe they just had the money and they just decided to shoot that thing that they talked about wanting to have in the other movie. Who knows? Yeah, they just decided to do whatever the hell they wanted to do, and they <laughs> didn't really care about what Court and Matt were going to think about it 30-odd-some years later. <laughs> Are we done with the last 20 minutes? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> The next 20 opens with Dr. Hot Pants and the crew looking at the old doctor's facility. They start talking, and that is now our next clip. No one has come here since the fire. 
somebody's been here all right. None of my people. I'm sure of this. Over here. Can you get up? I warned you about the place. Well, you were wrong. Evil spirits don't spread eagle people with steel wires or set traps. The house hasn't been abandoned. It's just been rigged up to scare people, that's all. Was Dr. Lorca's body ever found? No, I told you, no one. None of my people have come yet since the fire. The tunnel under the house must have collapsed and buried him, but nobody knows for sure. And Don Ramon survived. I think we should keep a watch on this place. We could start tonight. No. Ramu, look. Don't you see that someone is trying to exploit your fears for a purpose? And they're using the Lopez house. That's why they're so anxious to keep you out of the place. No. My people would not hear of it. If anything happened, I would be blamed for it. All right, I'll come back by myself. No, I'll come with you. Can you spare a couple of men to guard the government house tonight? Because obviously we can't bring Miss Russell with us. Oh, yes, you can. No, look, we don't know what we're up against. In case something goes wrong, at least one of us can get back to the mainland. Hey, now. Yes, Captain? Oh, forget it. Ramu? Yes, of course. Don't mention what we talked about to anybody. Is there a back door? Circle on around there to the left. Careful. Don't turn on the light. There are some sharp bomb shoots over there. What are you doing here? I already told you. I followed you from the village. You're wasting your time. I have plenty of time. We are standing in the open. Follow me. Okay, so at the end of the clip, Hot Pants and Badass go Scooby-Doo their way through the abandoned old house and snoop about. They find a severed head on a table and a dude lurking about with a machete. He darts, they give chase while Hot Pants shoots at him, and they follow him to the collapsed tunnels. Jesus, thankfully there is more dialogue and our next clip. What is it? Doc? Dr. Foster? Down here. Did you see anybody leave by the back way? No. There's been some trouble at the village. Is it Myra? They took her away. The guard outside was also killed. The green men did this. Did anyone see them? No one. We don't even know how long they've been gone. Where would they take her? I do not know. No one knows where the green men come from. There are no tracks of any kind outside, and the ground is hard and dry. There's one small chance. Razek is mixed up in this. We saw him a little while ago at the Lopez mansion. And there's only one way he could have gotten out. Through the tunnel. All right, so they find a secret button that opens a stone door to the tunnel and go spelunking through the cave system and follow it out to where the green men have camped out by a waterfall, or at least the dudes that are involved with the green men. It's just nefarious characters hanging out by a waterfall, basically. All nefarious characters. The reporter is led to the leader, and our heroes discuss bravely letting her fend for herself because the risk to try and take them on here is far too great to do anything. How brave of them. I mean, come on, man. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. I don't know why you're being so mean to these poor guys. Well, some more dialogue happens about this, so that's our next clip. Of course. There's too many of them. Maybe if we picked off the leader. No, we can't risk it. What do you think now, Rama? There weren't any green men in that bunch. What do you want to do? I'll follow them, alone. The captain will go back with you for help. He's got a few guns aboard ship. And at least three men who know how to handle them. Ramu, how many men can you bring along? They're willing to fight. Nine or ten, perhaps a dozen. We're going to need all we can get. they got a camp in these mountains somewhere, and there's bound to be more of them there. When you get ready to start looking for me, start over there across the stream. I'll leave a trail so you can follow it. Do me a favor, Captain, huh? Don't stop at any cantinas on the way back. <laughs> I said I was traveling alone. Have you ever been in these mountains before? Not these mountains, no. Well, I have. After this... Yeah, yeah. Dr. Hot Pants, you don't know fucking everything, <laughs> dummy. I was waiting for her to be all, like, ingrained from uh, Game of Thrones and yeah. be like, you know yeah, nothing, yeah. Dr. Hot Pants. You know nothing, Dr. Hot Pants. Jesus. <laughs> After this, it's another long jungle walk where the reporter is led by the non-green men into a clearing and definitely won't let them untie her hands before she sits down. 
Yeah. For some odd reason, she just like won't accept their help. She was kidnapped by them, so. Right. They all sit to rest, and she works on untying her bindings herself. But like, if they were going to untie her for her to sit down, maybe she just thought they wouldn't watch her as much. I Yeah. It's not clear why they chose to go the route that they did in this film for a lot of things, and that's one of them. That's, I mean, it is some massively confusing shit right now. <laughs> Hot pants and badass are always lurking just behind the men. Reporter gets her hands free and preps to make a run for it by basically going as slowly as possible and standing there in her pink outfit like hoping that no one will notice that she's moving <laughs> do, 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 act. she gets notice and gives chase and then it seems like she's rescued where she runs into our heroes for a moment and then this leads to like an a-team gun style shootout yeah. foot chase that lasts forever now dun, 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 dun. i don't know how they get separated but at some point they actually do but then we see the reporter run smack into a hanging corpse screaming her ass off and echo locating for her would-be cat Captors. Yes. She takes off and lands into a crawfy ground looking set of quicksand, screaming for help and found by the original captors when she is finally up to her head in the quicksand. The men fire off a signal, I guess, which keeps them from chasing Dr. Hotpants and his lady because this is the only person that they really care about is this reporter. The reporter is dragged from the quicksand and collapsed on the ground when the men who rescued her get that rapey, gross ass look in their eyes and start ripping off her clothing before the leader pulls a gun on them to stop it dead in its tracks. They do rip her top off, but again, this is a rape sequence or would-be rape sequence, so not cool, no thank you. No, no thank you, movie. They regroup with Hot Pants and Badass still following them, and that is the end of the 40-minute mark of the film. Well, we're at 40 minutes in, and it's it's gotten gross. <laughs> Yeah, but as, as these movies tend to do. Yeah, but thankfully it pulled away from it and the leader is like stopping his men from even yeah. doing it. It doesn't get like to where, you know, he leers at her or like it doesn't become like a gang rape or anything. It's just enough sleaze. I think it was just an excuse to get her top ripped off. But I think so. But really, like you could have just had it get ripped off by the quicksand if you wanted to just do that. You didn't have to throw in a sex scene. You yeah, know? right. You could have just. You could have just left it alone. It, it would have been fine. Right. It's, uh, you know, that's just the thing that they do with exploitation. That's always going to irk yeah. me. <laughs> it's always going to be there. The rest of this is just a lot of walking around and then like weird happenstance coincidence where it seemed like she was saved, but then wasn't like, I don't even remember how that happened Do you at all. Like when, no, cause she runs into them. Right. And then they're all of a sudden yeah. like at the shootout, all of a sudden they're separated again, but it doesn't show. Yeah, I like have no idea. It looked like she was rescued and then nothingness. Yeah. It fucking made me double check my notes. Like, wait, what? She was yeah. rescued? What, what, yeah, what she happened was. Here? But they, yeah. they get split up again, and we have no idea how. It's just all of a sudden she's running smack dab into a corpse, screaming, and then falling into a fucking bit of quicksand. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all that's happened here. <laughs> You want to start on on the next 20? Let's do it. All right. So there's more tromping through the jungle as hot pants and badass follow this group. Like, it's a lot. This is the most padded of the four films thus far, for sure. I wrote that in my notes, by the way. <laughs> and if the film's not going to try that hard to entertain me, then I'm just going to go ahead and start clipping all the dialogue possible from here on out, which leads to our next clip. At sunrise, the men who stayed behind will start looking for us. One of us has to go back to the village and leave a trail for them to follow. No, we'd lose Myra. No, the ground here is wet and it will not be hard to pick up their trail. As soon as you have led them in away from you, I'll start to follow Razak. No, not a chance. You're going back to the village. Look, for one thing, I don't know if I can find my way back here again. And for another, I don't want to take a chance on you falling into Razak's hands. The risk is the same, whether I go or stay. Maybe. But I've got a hunch that they want to talk to me. I don't think they'll hurt me. Not now, anyway. Why not? Just a hunch. we got about four hours till daybreak. Better try to get some rest. How long have you known that woman? Who, Myra? I met her the day we sailed from the mainland. Why? She likes you. I'm glad to hear it. You don't care? You know, considering the time and the place and the situation, you can sure think of some funny things to talk about. Why? Love is always interesting, is it not? I know about the woman who was with you the last time and how she died. Do you blame yourself for it? It wouldn't make any difference if I did, would it? Did you love her? 
Yes. How long has it been since you were with a woman? I could ask you how you meant that, but I won't. Now I'm going to get some sleep. With this, they get Making With the Love as badass pops her top. Thank you, movie. Thank you, movie. But then Dr. Hot Pants cools off for some reason and decides not to bring it all down to Pound Town. Maybe he's like, this isn't right. Maybe. He also says he feels like a fool, which he fucking should because she was ready yeah. to get down and bone. Uh-huh. You can have both. You can have both things. You can go be a rescuer and get sex before you may possibly die. You can have Two it things all. can be true. Yeah, that can happen. They cut yeah. from this to the Island Militia March, which is way more fucking boring than a sex scene what the fuck were you thinking movie yeah right come on movie the group makes it to a secret compound to another portion of the island with a burnt up but surviving baddie overseeing his jim jones pre-flavor aid troops he has the reporter dumped off at his quarters and goes to yet another super secret lab where the muck zombie thing from the beginning of the movie is beheaded yet still alive its eyes look up in anger at the doc as he stumbles his way around around the lab looking at stuff. He starts monologuing. Thank fuck, I'm tired of writing. That's our next <laughs> clip. Good morning, Don Ramon. I hope you slept well. Believe me, I know how difficult this must be for you. I cannot pretend to be surprised at your anger. I can only promise it won't be for much longer. How much longer? Depends a great deal on your attitude. You and I both know that you're now fully capable of rational thought and speech. But for reasons which salute me, you choose to remain silent. And really, it gains you nothing. Your personal feelings towards me shouldn't enter into it at all. Whatever you may think of me, I'm still your only chance, as I have been for a long time. Think about this, I beg you. You're Dr. Lorca. Yes. And you're Myra Russell. Reporter for the not-so-distinguished Honolulu Clarion. I don't suppose it's necessary to ask what brought you to this island. I might ask what you want with me. I'm not sure I can give you a straight answer to that question right now. The immediate reason for your abduction was a tactical one. I hadn't counted on meeting your friend, Dr. Foster, again. He is a somewhat reckless sort of person, and I felt that if he was really bent on seeing me, I should give him good reason to approach me with caution. You may have taken a great deal of trouble for nothing, Doctor. Yes, well, it wouldn't be the first time. You must be tired and hungry. I'm afraid our guest facilities here are somewhat limited, Miss Russell. But we'll try to make you as comfortable as possible. Razak. Razak will attend to your needs. Doctor, I think there's some things I ought to explain. We'll have plenty of time to discuss them later. Good day. Ay, ay, ay. Terrible. Mad Doctor is our main baddie, clearly, that survived and now has a Jim Jones-style compound complete with his own militia. Yeah, obviously. We now go back to Hot Pants trolling through the jungle, stepping on a branch, breaking it. The person he is following stops for a second and then thinks it's nothing. So the casual jungle stroll and pursuit continue for an inordinately long time. The guy disappears and Dr. Hot Pants plays at being a tracker when he is attacked by the dude from behind and dumps him into a tiger pit of some sort with lots of puncture and blood spray. About fucking time movie that walk lasted forever. Yeah, right. Right? Jesus Christ, it was enough. That death shriek from falling into the tiger pit brings the other dude quickly and Hot Pants initiates another A-team shootout that fizzles into another jungle run chase. Fuck my life. <laughs> the jungle run ends with a friendly fire death and Dr. Hot Pants broods as the dude who missed shot runs off. They cut from this to the natives and the ship's crew also walking through the jungle at a leisurely pace looking for Hot Pants and the reporter. Badass catches up with them and becomes the leader as Mr. Shot the Wrong Guy gets back to the compound. Oh, wait, there's more fucking dialogue, so that's our next clip. It's all right. Where's Bill? He went on ahead. We must hurry. He's in great danger every moment. Taina, let's go. Where are your men? Dead. And Dr. Foster? The foreigner. How many are with him? I don't know. 
It was too fast. I saw only one man, the foreigner. And my orders were to take him alive. I could not do it alone. Uh. No, Rasa. We don't need to send out any more men. I expect Dr. Foster to arrive very shortly. It's a pity. We've never been able to find a good cook willing to work under the uh, unusual conditions we offer. Of course, living comfortably isn't one of our main concerns here. Keeping out curious outsiders being more important. Yes. You find that reprehensible, evidently. I saw a kind of jailhouse outside. I didn't get much of a look at the We have a number of off. other equally interesting features here that you'll notice soon enough. All of which will serve to confirm conclusions that you already formed before you came. And what are your personal views on murder, Doctor? If I'm caught before I've completed my experiments, or after I've completed them and failed, I shall be regarded as a conscienceless, sadistic mass murderer and be dealt with accordingly. If I succeed... I shall be a selfless, dedicated hero of humanity, beyond a shadow of a doubt. And whichever way it goes, there will be a solid body of evidence to support either judgment. Beyond that simple notion, I have no personal views on murder, or conscience, or justice. How is the patient? Mm -hmm. The operation will go on as scheduled, 7 o'clock in the morning. Would you care to go for a little walk, Miss Russell? No, thank you, Dr. Lorca. I'd like to rest. As you wish. It was very kind of you to join me here tonight, and I'm grateful for it. Rasek will take you back to your quarters. Good night. What's on the other side of that mountain? No one knows. This whole region is taboo. It is the abode of the evil one. It is. Just more mountains, that's all. My father did not believe in taboo. He brought me here for the first time when I was a little girl. Between that mountain and the next one is a little plain beside the river. Well, that's where their camp is. That's where they've taken Mara. There's a narrow pass over there between those two low ridges. A trail that starts about there that leads into it and then over the top. They've got an outpost guarding the path from the top so we don't stand a chance of getting in that way. Hmm. We're going to have to think of something else. Early tomorrow morning, I'm going to start out up that trail alone. If it is Lorca out there, I don't think he'd have me killed without trying to figure out what I'm doing here. And if it is not Lorca? I think it is. I'm willing to gamble on it. He let me get this far. I think there's a reason for it. So what's the rest of the plan? Tomorrow night, just as soon as it gets dark, the rest of you cross the clearing single file just as quietly as you can and climb that side of the mountain about a couple of hundred yards to the left of the pass. Now, when you get to the top, Captain, you and your men go down to the river and cross it. Try to infiltrate the camp and find out where Myra and I are being held before it gets light at daybreak. Ronald, you and your men hit the outpost at the top of the pass and make just as much noise about it as you can. When the action starts, Captain, you try and get a sprung if you know where we are. And that is the end of the hour. Yeah, so we're making plans. Dr. Hot Pants seems to know his planning. I suppose so. I mean, he is supposed to be some kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is the same Peace Corps guy in all of the movies or not, but they kind of imply that like he is a, you know, a community builder kind of guy that goes out and does this type of volunteer work. Uh, it just so happens that he's also apparently a master tactician or just generally good at everything because he's a white dude. Yeah. I mean, this is before the times where we, you know, uh, this is before, you know, being open and and uh, uh, understanding and knowing that there are other races that can play the hero. Hey, don't you try to CRT this. Don't you bring critical race theory in here. <laughs> I know. I mean, come on. <laughs> what am I doing? You're right. Jesus. <laughs> there were a bunch of people that were teaching critical race theory, and then someone critical race theoried at me. Oh, no. And uh, Lord knows that's that's the problem. <laughs> Not that you had to learn how shitty we have been to other people yeah. whose skin color was different than ours. I think he kind of turns down the hot lady that is the badass because she was a different skin color than him. I kind of think so, too. It's kind of <laughs> gross. Well, we'll get into the reasons why very shortly because we're going to hit the final 30 here when we're done talking about the first full hour. Um, yeah. 
because <laughs> I just decided I'm not breaking it up into like 20 and then 10 odd minutes. I'm like, let's just do the final 30 and call it a day. Pretty much, right? <laughs> right. So he has this plan where he's going to basically sacrifice himself, but she goes back to the natives and does the thing that she's supposed to do. And <laughs> so he goes, <laughs> he, it's just so weird because like he's going to give the doctor exactly what he wants because he thinks this is what the doctor wants. And he's hoping that this is going to be all okay and that the, doc the doctor just wants to prove how good his science is, you know, because apparently this guy's so fucking great that he just has to, you know, yeah. prove himself to Dr. Hot Pants here. Yeah, right. It's just, hey, it's, I guess how <laughs> it goes now. Right. So far, this has been, let's just say, the loosest of a quote unquote plot we've had of all of the movies. Yeah, right. Just it's, <laughs> it's like they figured out a plot and then about like, I don't know. Uh, 40 minutes into it, they went, uh, weren't we supposed to be doing this? And they're like, well, fuck, it's too late now. <laughs> they just filmed a lot of walking and then loosely told story later to try and make it all work. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm good with moving on if you want. Well, Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the final 30 starts with our ninth clip. Still angry with me? I was never angry with you. Uncomfortable, perhaps, but not angry. But very uncomfortable. I'm not a good man, Lila. But I don't think I could make love to you without binding myself. I'm not ready for that. I asked for no promises. I know. You are good. And you are a man. I'll be sad for a long time that you are not mine. Better go away now. You are making me uncomfortable again. So he says he can't make love without binding himself to her in this clip. This is very important. So he's, he's trying to say he's, he's, he's he needs to be married before he uh, goes all the way. I don't know if it's married before he goes all the way. I think it's more like um like betrothed or spoken or you know it's like this thing where yes they're going to be a couple. So yeah, basically like he basically says, look, I couldn't take off my gear and throw down because we need to be bespoke towards each other or spoken for with each other. Uh, he, he likes to be in a committed relationship before he has sex right or so he says to her and, and yet and yet are we gonna try to make him the bad guy <laughs> no here's the thing he says this to her and if that were true that would be a very honorable reason not to have sex with her if it needs to mean something to him and he needs to sort of love and or care for the person before he fucks them sure great absolutely wonderful i would submit to you that later on he proves himself a liar but we'll get there when we get there i just want to point that out that when we get there this is where i think he's a fucking racist liar uh, all right all right I mean, I'm not doubting you it, very well. Yeah. All right. The end of the clip leads into a very grody and realistic surgery footage that I think may Oof. have been stock footage that they inserted of like a throat actually being cut up. Probably. They cut from that to hot pants surrendering himself like in his plan and then cut to more green fluid and surgery footage as the mad doctor is about to attach a head to a body for science, I guess. Science that blinded me with science. Seems this has failed as he has declared that subject dead and that the artificial head is supposed to be activated once again. So this yeah. green fluid stuff that's pumping blood and stuff into the body is an artificial head. I thought a heart would be the thing that pumps the blood into the body. You would think, but no, because now you're obviously not a scientist. Apparently not. So Hot Pants finally surrenders and is led through the death compound as the reporter emerges in an island bikini dress. They lay a whole hopping load of dialogue on us for a long period of time, trying to explain away all of the walking that we have just seen and the motivations of every single fucking character. It's about 15-ish minutes of screen time, I think, condensed down to the next six minutes in our final clip. Well, Doctor, frankly, I was kind of hoping you'd retired. You never cease to surprise me, Dr. Foster. This is quite an impressive gambit you've opened. You all right? Oh, Dr. Locke has been a most obliging host. Oh, he's never anything but. What brings you to Blood Island this time, Doctor? Well, basically, I came here to gather some more information about your experiments. Your old experiments, that is. That is, before you began to suspect that I was still alive. After that, you came into the jungle to hunt me down. 
And kill me? Hardly that. It never occurred to me to even come this far until you had Miss Russell kidnapped. That's not too strong a word, is it? It covers the situation. May I ask why you did that? It was rather a spur-of-the-moment decision. It seemed a little easier to arrange than kidnapping you. It might have been easier all around to just invite me here. Ah, now. You know what the devious mind I have, Doctor. I would never think of that. I believe you have something to show me, Dr. Lorca. Certainly, if you'll be good enough to come with me. The three of us survived the explosion of the cave by the merest fluke. Most of the blast was directed outwards, you see, so that the cave was heavily damaged. But as you must have noticed, the tunnel that I had built from the basement of the Lopez house hardly touched at all. Fortunately, Rasak was there to help me. He carried me back into the house. Don Ramon, as you know, escaped. Rasak nursed me back to health. I had over the years given him a rather sketchy medical education, but enough of one apparently to save my own life. How long ago was that? Less than a year, surely. This is what I have managed to do in that time. About three months ago, we finally managed to find Don Ramon and restrain him. That wasn't too difficult. He was more dead than alive. His recovery was slow. But even then it was clear that his predilection for violence was in no way diminished. This is how I stabilized the situation. It took a great deal of effort to obtain the equipment I needed, but uh, it was done. One promising result of this phase of the experiment is that the pernicious side effects of chlorophyll on the body itself have been arrested. In the meantime, the body is alive but is merely vegetating. It cannot be activated without a guiding intelligence, which cannot be provided by a mechanical device. On the other hand, the Ramon's head cannot as yet be safely returned to his body. So you've gone back to experimenting with human beings again? Oh, yes. Your original judgment has been thoroughly vindicated. I'm other than ever. It may surprise you to know, Doctor, that I'm not as sure of that as I once was. Humoring him won't get you anywhere. I'm not trying to. You see, it's all very well to have principles as long as you never have to fight for them. When that happens in the kind of world that we live in, you're liable to run into a few unpleasant surprises, like getting your throat cut by the very people that you're fighting for. You'll allow me a few reservations on that statement, Doctor. You're entitled to them. The Foundation fired me six months ago. Yes? My information was that you resigned. Let's say I wasn't offered much of a choice. Russell, will you escort Dr. Foster and Miss Russell to the quarters and see to the doctor's needs? Perhaps we can have another talk later. What did you think of that, Don Ramon? Our Dr. Foster seems to have grown a little more complicated, hasn't he? Be as stubborn as you like, old friend. The day may come when I no longer have need of you. The day may come soon, Lorca. How'd it go? What difference does it make? Well, what did he say? Oh, he made what he called a practical suggestion. He uh, suggested that I become his woman for a while and try to give him a child. Nothing personal in it, mind you, just mutual insurance. What? It came to him as kind of a passing thought over dessert. As things stand, he couldn't very well let me go and trust me to keep my mouth shut. On the other hand, he wouldn't want to have me killed. Whereas, if he had some kind of pledge... I get the picture. Oh, that's not all. He said that if I didn't think that that was such a hot idea, it would be okay to have a child by you instead. That's quite a mind he's got. He cuts right to the bare bones of things. If you're laughing at me, I swear I'll kill you. I'm not. He's not going to lay a hand on you, Myra. I promise you that. Well, what was all that stuff you were giving him this morning? Do you think I walked into this slaughterhouse on the chance that Lorca might have a job for me? Are you as crazy as he is? You don't have to yell at me. Well, talk sense, then. Why did you come? For better reasons than you give me credit for. I'm too scared to think straight. Myra, I'll get you out of here. Just don't fall apart on me, because I'm going to need your help. Nothing personal in that, either. If you say so. I never thought I could be this frightened. 
listen, next time you charge in and decide to rescue some knuckle-headed damsel in distress, you'd better think twice. All right. So during the clip, we actually hear the Headless Beast finally speaks. And at the end of the clip, Hot Pants and the reporter begin to throw down as she kisses all over his chest and belly, getting after that jungle sweat that's running down his stomach and into his belly button. Oh, the smell in there's got to smell like three-week-old gym socks wrapped in a dirty diaper. Now, where at what point did he become bound to the reporter that him throwing down with her is okay? And now, maybe it's... Now, I, now I'm just saying, you're, you're probably right. He's just racist. But, but it could be in an unbelievable, emotionally charged situation in which they're both held captive to a psychopath. May have turned him up a bit so what you're saying is he was not sure whether or not he was going to die a virgin (laughs) yeah exactly listen sometimes shit happens okay that is one explanation as to why he's okay with it but like he doesn't even question it like when she starts coming on to him he's like pants down before she can even do anything else I'm just, I'm just trying to say <laughs> things happen. But at what point, when did he get bound to her? Because he spent less time with her than he did with the badass lady who saved I, his life on multiple occasions. I'm saying, I'm saying maybe he's like through the bounding out because he's like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to die in here or something worse. So I better, you know, well, I, get to boning. <laughs> I would submit to you that he could have had both of them and had the best of both worlds. Well, okay, but you're a pig. <laughs> <laughs> no, they both offered themselves to him, and he went yeah, for it. So, but in one situation, now again, I, 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 I'm not trying to argue the case here. I'm just saying you're also not wrong that I'm a pig, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I am too. It's fine. Uh, I mean, it's not fine, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's if it's two just- separate women want to have sex with you at two different points in time, and neither of them know that the other one happened, it's not your fault, and you're not responsible for telling them. They want to have sex with you in the state that you're at, and you have sex with them. That's as much on them as it is on you. Uh, again, you're not wrong. I, you're not wrong. I'm just saying maybe he was like at the time when Badass was sitting on him, he didn't feel like his life was going to end. He felt more in control. So there he's like, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't do this. I have a code. Now he's sick and shit. I'm probably going to die in here. Uh, I, I'd better get some ass. Well, part of me is hoping that part of him who is actually not racist in this context is actually wondering why the hell he didn't throw down with Badass too at this point. He could be. Maybe he is. Right now, he's like, shit, I should have hooked up with her when I had the chance to, but I just, I had these dumb fucking morals and shit. Now, you know, I don't know where, where did that get me. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, I regret a lot more of the ass I didn't get through my own moral code than the, Same. Than the ass that I accepted that fit my moral code, my friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I totally agree. So what I'm saying is, wash your hands, wrap it up, and fuck it all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And whatever you do, always make sure, wash your hands afterwards. Don't be filthy. (laughs) They drop clothing and get naked. Thank you, movie, because holy hell was she stunning. Yeah. Hmm. They cut from something fun to watch like sex to the villagers and the ship crew prepping the to storm the Jonestown compound by throwing hand signals and sneaking about the jungle. Seriously, the sex was way more entertaining. Do we really need this? Yeah, what? Why did we have to see this? I'm I'm with you. They cut from that to the mad doctor's men checking out the caged green men and selecting one of them for experimentation, one would assume. They cut from that to a mad doctor playing with his headless toy. They cut to the doctor's cronies playing poker. Then they cut to the storming of the compounds as they climb up a cliff face. And one guy gets stuck, making way too much goddamn noise and alerting the guards. This causes <laughs> this causes a cat and mouse style search as the men from Jonestown find a goat and do not see the climbing villagers. They blame the goat and throw something at it. Of course. Fucking goats. The doc is trying a head transplant again as the villagers start killing guards. Hot Pants starts his adventure killing some guards and a massive compound wide gunfight happens as the villagers and Hot Pants storm and slaughter the Jonestown residents. This interrupts the head transplant and Hot Pants has been handed a death warrant by the mad doctor so basically they blow up a bunch of shit in the compound one of the things that gets blown up is the generator right yeah they throw some hand grenades on it that interrupts the head transplant the mad doctor freaks the fuck out and decides that it's time for dr hot pants to die yes he's like oh i guess we gotta go (laughs) 
You gotta go, sir. During the battle, the would-be rapist dude finds the reporter again and grabs her, but she is saved by Badass, who struggles with the rapist until the reporter spears him. Oh, sweet irony, he got something shoved into him he didn't want it by her. Ha <laughs> ha. More shootout scenes as Hot Pants kills the number one henchman and the sick green men are set loose. Turns out that the father who disappeared of Badass was actually here the entire time as one of the green men, but they don't stick around and let you feel that or think about that for too long. They cut no. from this to Hot Pants wants to break into the lab, and the only way in is with dynamite, apparently. Then they cut from that to the Beast is somehow controlling his body and helps it break loose. Bad Doc tries to stop it, but is manhandled and beaten while the severed head laughs at being told to stop, and the body thrashes the doctor and starts to destroy equipment. Pretty sure that the oscilloscope head smash means the doc is most sincerely dead this time. Most sincerely dead. Yeah, because wasn't he supposed to die in an explosion before? Yeah, but somehow they retconned that to make this movie happen. Well, anyway, the compound <laughs> is set ablaze by the villagers, and there is something very familiar with all of this on like how the last movie ended. Big explosions start happening, and many burning huts are all over the place. The villagers wander off with hot pants and the reporter after they say they won't use any of the pictures. I guess that means that they're going to try and cover this all up. Doesn't fucking matter because we roll fucking credits. Jesus, man, there was way too much fucking walking and, and laying about. Like, the only thing we could really talk about in this film is whether or not the guy was racist in his decision to not sleep with the lady that was coming on to him at the, the badass lady that was coming on to him. Yeah, right. Just, yeah, that's the one thing you take away from this movie. The one thing I definitely take away from this movie is when ass is offered, if you have protection, take it. Yeah. I, I I guess. I, I mean, you know, we say that, but maybe you shouldn't. Maybe maybe sometimes you look back and be glad. There are there are times where I look back and wish maybe I, discretion would have been the better part of valor. Not a single one of those. There's somewhere I wish I would have been a little safer, and I'm glad I got out unscathed. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, maybe I'm also thinking that <laughs> you miss a hundred percent of the orgasms you're offered, and you don't take. Yeah, yeah. You miss all this 100 percent of the shots you don't take. That's <laughs> I'm just saying, some like true as shit. I'm just saying, like everybody should be fucking. This <laughs> is just you know, yeah, if, with consent, right. obviously. But if you know, with consent, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, don't let your racism get in the way of getting good nookie. Well, yeah, well I mean, unfortunately, a racist is gonna racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh brother uh, the, some of the gore stuff that was happening was great the headless effects and all of the stuff that was kind of like a brain that wouldn't die but with like a transmuted beast that they made the costume for that stuff was pretty cool especially the when the severed head was talking and moving from the actual beast slash uh, baron guy that they they turned into this creature that was really fucking cool <laughs> yeah yeah, that was cool. Uh, the, the severed head stuff was probably some of the best effects that they had. And they definitely hint through the movie where he's attempting to control the body with some kind of psychic power or what have you. Um, I liked seeing the severed, like the, the headless body thrashing about, but I would have liked to have seen what they promised us on the poster where the beast is carrying his own head around and like using it to move his head around and look in different directions. I would have. That would have been good. Even just one scene of that would have been nice to see, like where, you know, it's a severed head being handed handled by the the body that it was severed from i would have loved to have right? seen that yeah same but i mean it's not that big of a disappointment uh, the biggest disappointment is just all the fucking walking around the goddamn jungle that this movie does it's worse than the stuff that happened in terror as a man it really is jesus christ man a lot of, a lot of filler in this <laughs> A lot, like a lot, a lot. Like all the reason that we got done as quickly probably was what we did is because I just didn't talk about every single thing that happened when they were walking around. And yeah, and then like the Jesus. long clips when they were actually were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's not a whole lot of story to really glom or grab onto. It's just a generally nope. entertaining film. I will say this, the hour and a half went very quickly, especially when I was doing the notes. Yeah, yeah, the, that first hour can it gets you in the end because you're like, damn, it went quick. It, well, I don't know about doing the notes. It, 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 it's so weird. How can a simultaneously first hour seem to go so fast and yet all that padding seemed to be so long? Well, because your brain kind of checks out for the running, right? And you're just looking yeah. at it. Like whenever yeah. you have to think about what's happening, Happening. I mean, your brain does check out. I think they were kind of leaving those sequences in and then they would have some dialogue or something happen so that you could come up from, you know, the necking that you're doing at the drive-in while watching this. 
Yeah, I mean, because I mean, that's all this movie's good for. Which, by the way, if this film is playing in the drive-in, but you have an opportunity to get laid but not watch it, you should get laid. Get laid, don't watch this. Yeah. It's 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 not important. Just wash your hands and use protection. If somebody wants to actively let you uh, be with them in the most intimate w- of ways, definitely take that. All I was prepared for was over the pants mouth stuff. Exactly. That's usually all you get when you're at a uh, drive-in. But <laughs> last time I went to the drive-in, it was like uh... jumped right into horse fucking. J- <laughs> jumped right into horse fucking at the drive-in. <laughs> what kind of drive-in are you going to? <laughs> the best kind, apparently. <laughs> I guess. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, I think I'm good. I, I think we can uh, be done talking about I the think, movie. Yeah, we, I think we can. We we we've kind of already said at the beginning where we rank this movie. So. Yeah, yeah, and I think we've justified as to why um, the nudity in it, for the most part, except for. For the one scene of nudity in it there's all thank you movies except for when the top gets rubbed off that we already discussed and unfortunately <laughs> our hero made a very poor choice in not sleeping with both of the heroines yeah well that's that's just unfortunate that he wasn't uh he was trying to be ethical <laughs> yeah all your ethics do is get you blue balls my friend that's that jesus <laughs> Again, with consent, as long as there's consent, consent and protection and everybody washes their hands afterwards, there's we nothing really wrong with pigs. it. <laughs> well, we're going to take a little break now. We're going to come back and do some PSYOP news, and then we're going to wrap up this fucking show. Up first, we're going to have the original sins with Beast in Me. sins with the beast in me what a fun upbeat song to try and bring us out of the funk that that movie left us in yeah i mean i wasn't too much in a funk though yeah i just i can't get over or let go of the fact that that guy didn't sleep with them both you really can't are you all right pal (laughs) no i'm apparently really really horny yeah i guess jesus (laughs) it's hard to tell are you are you mad at this guy's racism potential racism or are you just really horny (laughs) (laughs) well while i try to figure out both with a therapist why don't you give us some psyop news What comes for our man in the field, Robert? Ah, our man in the field, Robert. He must yep. have an incredibly long penis. That's what I keep hearing. All right. Uh, Slate article. Is it really healthy to eat human bones and all? A uh, cannibalism expert explains. In other horse sex news. I don't know how that... No, there's no horse sex in this. <laughs> as much as you want there to be. <laughs> Jumped right into uh, horse fucking... In one of the newest films, Bones and All, and and, uh, the uh, Call Me By Your Name director, Luca Garigano, I think, I don't even know if I'm saying that name right, reunites with Timothy Chalamet to tell yet another story of young love. This time, instead of being a gorgeous... This uh, this time, instead of being gorgeous gay boys, the lovers, Chalamet and Waves, Taylor Russell, are high school dropouts and vagabonds who particularly enjoy the taste of human flesh. I have the most confused direction right now. <laughs> in Bones and All, based on Cam- Camille D'Angelis' the Angelis novel of the same name, Chalamet and Russell uh, play Lee and Marin, two young adults whose penchant for eating human flesh has consigned them to the fringes of society, this is leading like them to. Death fucked a porno. Kinda. Uh, road trip through America's back roads and beltways. Of course, there's an occasional human snack along the way, but they tried their best to be good, knowing that feeding on another human requires taking advantage of them. Blood and yet, like an addiction, they can't uh, resist their deeper hunger. Your cum will probably taste better. That's 
That's some weird stuff right there. Uh, weird, wild stuff. Hope Always looking for one. Wang. Uh, and there's a lot of Wang around. When asked about the taste of certain people, the cannibal said, I hate a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, let's see here. The other cannibal disagreed with, My love of dead kids. Good God. Uh, okay, here we go. So anyway, uh, Bones and All tells a surprisingly beautiful tale about love and loss. The film is about loneliness, trauma, and belonging more than it is about cannibalism. That said, let's circle back to the cannibalism part because people have some questions. That's my finish. If, by the way, I should say the Slate article was written by Nud Ria Golf. If I pronounce that right, but you should probably give uh, props. Uh, if Lee and Mary, could, Mary could have it their way, they'd eat flesh all the time. And the... Uh, and they can't help but wonder if that's even possible. What about nutrition? I mean, they'll both uh, be vampires. Why would they want to put their teeth in man? Anyway, they talked to the the author of the article. Talked to another author named Bill Shutt, who he's a zoologist and an author. He says to compare it to somebody who has decided that all they're going to do is eat cows for the rest of their life. They're not going to eat fruit. They're not going to eat vegetables. They're just going to eat meat, mammal meat. It could be muscle. You'd eat uh, steak or ribs, or it can be organ meat, a liver, kidneys. It would be exactly the same as if someone just decided to only eat human flesh. Uh, Shut, who uh, wrote the book Cannibalism, A Perfectly Natural History, went on. You'd be getting a lot of protein and fat, no carbs, and very, very few vitamins, vitamin C vitamin D, all the sort of deficiencies that go along with the lack of those vitamins, they become apparent very quickly. Your LDL cholesterol levels are going to shoot through the roof. You're probably going to be lethargic, or perhaps you might end up in such a precarious health that a shot of apple cider would keep you from sleeping for a month. Jesus. Um... Yes, he says it's he says it's absurd to think that there would be a biological reason for people to just consume human bodies as a regular practice as a means of nutrition, Shoot said. Even more so when you remember that these are supposed to be kids on the run who all who need all the energy they can muster. Because human flesh is hard to secure, we see Lee and Marin eat other things throughout the movie, but they're always presented as a second choice. There is a stack of uh, diner pancakes, maybe an apple, some Cornish game hens that are prepared but we never see them eaten. Seems like they could have really benefited from some more uh, serious roughage, and they're not going to get it from eating a health nut who keeps up with their vitamins and buys farmer's market veggies either. Oh, if they could soon should be teethy. If they consume the contents of their stomach and there happened to be a plant matter in there, then they would be getting some partially digested whatever veggies that guy ate. Shut humored me. But you're not going to be storing enough of the essential nutrients that you'd get from eating plants and fruit in your flesh and cannibal to in your flesh for a cannibal to benefit from them. Why uh, they when they in turn eat you. So there you go. Uh, human flesh can also be unsafety. Uh, even if our hypothetical real life cannibals would diversify their diet to avoid scurvy, they would still render themselves vulnerable to a host of human diseases and bloodborne pathogens. Some of these are serious bovine spongiform ethnopathy or mad cow disease. I wish I would just would have gone with that, as human varieties as well. Uh, Kuru, a particularly fatal degenerative brain disorder, has been found among the four people of Papua New Guinea who performed cannibalism as, as a funerary practice. Uh, it is determined that it was something called a, a spongy form. Uh, it's a close thing you can get to Alzheimer's disease. I'm fucking not even trying this anymore. Uh, <laughs> good God almighty. Hey, bro. So, uh... Yeah, it's the closest thing you think of to Alzheimer's disease. It basically turns your brain to a sponge. There's holes in it. That's what happens if you eat the flesh of a human, especially from the brains and spinal cord and nerves of somebody who has the disease, Shoot said. This Some of these the issues could possibly be solved. Uh, some of these can be solved if the protagonists were in the business of cooking their meals. But Lee and Marin lean more towards zombie and less Hannibal Lecter. Every eater in Bones of All, Lee, Marin, and some questionable characters in Middle of the Journey consume flesh raw right off the body. So, it, the article goes on a little bit longer, but uh, I think you, what you're getting is what you're getting. Uh, they pretty much say no. Uh, eating such things are not completely healthy for you so don't go cannibal people it's not going to help you out <laughs> might be better for the environment though 
Possibly only because you're making less people, but you're you're going to die with them. <laughs> That's fair. Well, uh, let's go ahead and close out the fucking show then, because now we, we've had cannibalism and island yeah. blood and uh, sacrifice and the dude not hitting both chicks when he could have gotten a chance. Dog and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Yeah. Well, we're going to close out this show with uh, the Ending Legion promo. And then right after that, we're going to have Bloody Holiday from the Necromantics. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found Bloody Holiday from the Necromantics. And if you listen close enough to the lyrics, there's a lot of stuff that matches with all the Blood Island films a little bit. Yeah, right. It's, uh, it actually works out pretty well. <laughs> kind of on the nose, even, one would say. <laughs> yeah, and all I did was just pick it because it says Bloody Holiday. And I'm like, I think this will work. Of yeah, it, it totally did. <laughs> Other times where I was pleasantly surprised by the lyrics fitting way more than I thought they would in a song for our pirate radio. And it cannot be found on our main landing page, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. Reason for that is that's only going to be happening on the Pirate Radio edit, so you're not going to find it there. Although some of the really, really old episodes still have the original music in them, so I don't know what happened there and how that works on the main feed. So check it out. See if you can find it. And if not, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, I still have those files somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Just maybe. (laughs) I do. And if you want to talk to me about it, you can reach out to me on the Legion Discord chat, which I'm more likely to respond to you a lot quicker there. Or in the Facebook group Cinema PsyOps. I've been basically keeping in touch with people a lot more there or on messenger as court psyops there from facebook but the best place to enjoy the fruits of the devil that is this show is the cinema underscore psyops instagram feed which supplies you with all of the memes yeah all the memes well if you're all the goodest memes if you're a nigerian prince that's looking to have a little bit of support yeah. to help you get your money out of your country you can email me cinema psyops court at gmail.com like all of your brethren that are trying the same thing it, it will get you a steam code <laughs> We will reply with a steam code and thoughts and prayers. <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Well, while you're out there realizing that thoughts and prayers are absolutely useless and do absolutely nothing, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. <laughs>
Hey, for a second there, I thought, oh, fuck, I'm not going to be able to hear him. <laughs> All right, I'm up. You good? You hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're recording? I am now. One, two, three. Everything's good. All right, awesome. I'm trying to scarf down a ch- uh, an egg sandwich that my wife made for me, which I'll do during <laughs> the uh, theme song being played here. And then we can finish out the Blood Island series right after that. <laughs> Word up. Here we go. After the trippy... Uh, uh. And after the clip, the reporter lady is beset upon by a beast man, but is startled, but is... Wait. Uh, <coughs> Uh-oh. Don't know what we wrote. Oh, fucking auto-correcting the spelling is what fucked me up here. What do you, type it out or do you do voice? I, I type it out. <laughs> and Dr. Hot Pot... Uh, no, I'm not going to reinstall it with an update right now. Are we done with the last 20 minutes? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Unless you need to install some updates. No, that will fucking close you out, so we're not going to do that. Oh, yeah. Good (laughs) good idea. Two seconds. I rearrange my clips. Got like 20 of these to get through. I don't know if you're paying attention or not. (laughs) I'm listening to you, 20 of them. I don't. It's not actually 20. Declared that the artificial... Or declared the... So, okay. uh, So, anyway... uh, Hold on here. It's kind of hard to do this article here because it's not really an article. It's more of an opinion. there realizing that thoughts and prayers are absolutely useless and do absolutely nothing kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch <laughs> oh man all right there we go and 